Okay, so 10. I am taking, I'm going to take my time to actually work through it, even though I could just give you the answers, because I think uh, one of the biggest problems is when we get, when we get um, a question, how do we get it, how do we get it to show up on our screen, right? That's always the biggest problem. And so we'll, we'll tackle that right now. Uh, Adriana, do you mind turning off the lights? Later. Oops, no lead, but I have more here. So, so let's uh, let's type it in. Um, by the way, f of x shouldn't scare you, right? It's the same thing as y, right? Uh, in IPR, you learned about uh, function notation versus just the equation. Uh, so don't let that throw you off. So you just type this in the left, uh, the right hand side. So exactly the way it is there, right? So x minus eight bracket uh, x plus fifteen. Take a m minute to check. I will already make y two equal to zero because I'm gonna want to find the x intercepts. And that's what I see. So I'm gonna go zoom six to reset. And uh, I know it's pointing up, right? Because some of you have asked, where is A? A is right there. Okay. That is A, and A in this case is equal to plus 1, right? So we know it's, it's going to be pointing up, so I, kind of, I can predict the behavior of this uh, parabola. It's going to be pointing up. So the vertex is somewhere down here. So I'm going to start adjusting my Y min, okay? Why are you going minus 150? Because I just tried that and that worked for me. So you, you would keep adjusting until you see it. Until you see the vertex. I see my Y intercept. I see this X intercept. There's still an X intercept way out here. So you have to adjust your X min, right? The minimum X value you're able to see. Um, I'm gonna go negative 50. And it's a little bit overkill, but that's okay. As soon as you see the whole thing, uh, the calculator uh, works, right? It, it will do the rest. So what form is this in? This is factor. Factor form. Opening is up because A is positive. Just looking at the sign of A, okay? Uh, width is normal. And why is that? Because A is exactly equal to 1. The y-intercept, you can't just get it off of that. So you have to go second. Trace, and here's what I'm going to introduce something new here. Second trace one, right? X is equal to zero. What you are really finding, folks, is this you're finding f of zero. Do you remember that? What, what, what is he talking about, f of zero? You're saying find the y value. Find the y value when x is equal to 0, right? Because f of x is saying, hey, plug in an, any x value you would like, and I will figure out the y value. So that's what you're doing here. You're finding f of 0. So we're going to go second trace 1, x is equal to 0. So that's negative 120, exactly. Okay, so I want you to write it like this. Okay. Uh, on this side here, where I turn my pencil is, I'm going to do this. F of 0, basically, if, if x is equal to 0, then on the right side, it's, 100 and, it's negative 120. Does that make sense? Do you remember that from IPR? OK. It's just another way of looking at things, right? OK, vertex. The vertex is, in this case, my min, right? So I'm going to right away tell Mr. Nerdson how I found it. We are on page 10. All right, so second trace min, that's the third option. Go a little bit to the left of it because it's asking for left boundary, right boundary. And there it is. It's a negative 3.5, negative 3.5, uh, negative 132.25. 
Okay. Axis of symmetry, right, is the equation negative 3.5. It's a vertical line. Equation of min or max, in this case, there is only a min, right? So circle the min, and that's y is equal to negative 132.25. X-intercepts, I let y2 equal to 0, and then I'm going to find the intersection. Let me just do this here. And so uh, I already have y2. You need to make sure when you do this, you graph first, because you need that red line, the horizontal line to appear here, or else it will not be able to find the intersection. So I'm going to go closer to that, that one there, hit enter three times. That's negative 15, 0. And on the other side, second trace 5 again. I'm going to, did I show you the cheat, right? Jump and shortcut, right? It, you're allowed to trace along either curve, okay? And by the way, but down the road, we're going to have three different ones, not this unit, a different unit. And that is eight zero, eight zero. Okay, so we've got that figured out. Uh, here's the domain. Some of you ACs, you did not know domain and range, but that's okay. It was Monday. So this is how it would be in a set notation. This is how it, you would write it in interval. I will switch to interval later on. I will prefer interval, but uh, either one is fine. Range, it's pointing up. So Y is greater than or equal to, right? Think of it that way. If it's pointing up, uh, it'll be greater than or equal to, and you just go look at the y value of the vertex, and that's your range, right? Values have to be greater than or equal to that lowest value. If it's lower than that, there is no graph, right? This graph doesn't exist, so you're saying this is the only time you will see it for the y values. Um, and we have negative 132. 25 to positive infinity, round bracket, square bracket. Okay. So this is just gathering information. Uh, the most important ones, if you ever graph, guys, okay, careful, uh, it's, it's these ones here. I, I want you to make sure you always find the intercept. So the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and the vertex. You need those points to, to make an accurate graph. Um, X-intercepts, there will be times you don't have one. Okay, There will be, and I will show you how to tackle those a little later. Okay, So let's graph this. So you have to come up with a scale. And I'm looking at my X-intercepts. If I go from to negative 20 to positive 20, I will fit these in. I'm fine there. Uh, vertex, I need to go as low as negative 132. That's like the lowest y value. There's negative 120, but if I get this far, I will make sure that fits in as well. So I kind of focus on x-intercepts, like how far on, along the x-axis do I need to account for? And this is the lowest y value right here. So I'm going to go negative 50, negative 100, negative 150 right and obviously you should call, label this as y i'm just giving you the start right and this label you label that as an x-axis down the road these are going to be called time and height right money over time money and products sold stuff like that but for now it's x and y and then you go up a few okay that's good enough. You don't have to label the whole thing. Just tell me that this is what it is, right? Um, just going to make the markings there. And then here, negative 15. So I'm going to make everything worth 5. Okay, so this is negative 10, negative 20. So if you label, you don't have to label every single marking, but this is telling me that the scale is actually 5. Okay, and then here, I'm going to make those markings and I'm just going to label 10, 20 like that. 
and you're like, Mr. Dirksen, is it okay? Is it okay to do this here? 100, 200, like that. Yes. Right? So you're, you're telling me, I can tell that you're going up by 50 consistently. Consistently. And Mr. Dirksen, there's a different scale for X axis and a different scale for Y axis. That is okay. As long as you're consistent. You can't go 50 and then all of a sudden go up by 20. You can't do that. You have to be consistent, right? So I will put down X and Y scale can be different, comma, but needs to be consistent. That's going to be a big hook, right? Like if I'm going to, I'm going to emphasize that a lot, right? So if you're, uh, if you get that wrong, you're going to lose marks. Okay. So now let's just plot those points, right? Um, negative 15 would be right about there. That's my y, one X intercept. The other one is eight zero, which I can actually exactly put on this graph. Eight zeros right there. Then you have, the vertex, negative 3.5, negative 132. So I'm going to go right about there. No, wait a minute. Sorry. Mr. Dirksen, you need, you need to read your coordinates. Negative 3.5, right? Sorry about that. Negative 3.5, negative 132. It's here. How did, I, how did I know that this is wrong? Because the vertex should be halfway between these two points, right? It, it's the halfway point. So there is that, and then my y intercept is negative 120, which is right about there. Okay. So here we go. You start at the vertex, go out a little bit, then curve in, and sometimes you have to kind of just make it look a little bit better, okay. and then out. And over. And I forgot one thing last time. I did forget that. You need to put the equation on here. F of x is x minus 8, x plus 15. Okay. So here it is. Graph, right? You have your X and Y intercept, right? Your scale, label, axes, right? And equation. If you have these components, sorry. If you have those things, you will always get full marks if those things are there, right? X and Y intercepts, oh, I'm forgetting vertex. Yeah, there you go. So intercepts, vertex, scale, label your axes, and make sure the equation is on there. Okay, so that's the page 10. In the workbook, which one would you like me to do there? If you, if you did the homework, let me know. If you struggled with one of them, let me know. Uh, I'm thinking... Page four, question three. So you take your workbook, okay? Page four, question three. And I will be a little bit faster now, okay? So let's type in that equation. And uh, I told you how I do it when there's a fraction right at the beginning. I go brackets, 
negative 7 divided by 8 x squared plus 27x plus 50. I'll let you get settled first. I'll do my attendance real quick. Type that in. I'm going to go zoom six. I'm going to make some observations here that this is going to be pointing down, right? So make a prediction where the vertex is going to be. Like I see this going this way. So the vertex is probably going to be somewhere up here, right? So the first order of business for me is I don't like to change too many things at the same time. So Y max, I'm just going to go 200. Oh, that's better, right? Even more now. 500. Okay. So now, now you can tell that you, you don't need to get higher with the Y max because it's already kind of curving, right? It's, it's flattening. So now I'm going to go X max, right? What should I go? 100? You already did this. Oh, overkill, but that's okay. Um, I'm seeing the Y intercept, vertex, X intercept, X intercept. So everything is there. Everything I need is there. So technically, you can leave it like that. If you want to polish it, remember I put X max as 100, right? This is right now. This is the 100 mark. I can probably cut that in half to X max being 50. So, right? So then it's a little bit... Uh, like it takes up more of your screen. Same with the Y max. This is pro for me, what is it, 500? You can probably bring it down to like 300 if you'd like. But it, again, it doesn't matter. As soon as you see it, you're good, okay? All right, you got that part? Everybody seeing this? All right. Uh, so now, uh, what am I gonna find first? I'm gonna find my intercepts. Second trace five. Sure, I'll find that to the right first. 32.61. 32.610. So I'm going to write that down. 32.610 is one of them. And I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going to jump lines to the red line and just cut across. That is already, you're now closer to the left x intercept. So you can stop there and just hit enter three times. And I get negative 1.75. So negative 1.75, zero is my other x intercept. Um, we'll just leave the keys for now because it's going to take up uh, my graphing space. Y intercept, do you need the calculator for the y intercept? It's in general form. So you can just say it's 0, 0.50. Vertex, let's go ahead and find it. Second trace, it's a maximum in this case. So just go closer. So that's a point to the left, right? It says left boundary, hit enter. Go over the hill. 15.43. 15.43, round it. 200, what's that? 258.29. So that is my vertex. Um, when I say min max, it's the equation of the max, right? So this is y is equal to, let me just move my calculator here, 258.29. Axis of symmetry is the equation of the axis of symmetry, which is just the x value of the vertex. Domain, I will just go with this one. And the range, it's pointing down, correct? So it'll be y is less than or equal to 258.29. And this is just for you here, the window that you use 
Uh, so I'm going to press window and just say I use negative 10, 50, negative 10, 300. That's what I used, right? You may have used something different. In fact, my key will probably be different, right? But that goes to show that it's not like it's, you can get it wrong if you see it, okay? Okay, so let's, <clears throat> this is where it gets a little trickier because there are no markings here, right, whatsoever. So that's where you come in and watch how I do this. X intercepts, right? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to like negative five as the negative five all the way to like maybe 40 on the positive side for this, for the X axis. So watch how I do this. As long as you're consistent, this is good. I'm gonna go 10, 20, 30, 40. So I'm going up by 10, right? And this takes care of the x-axis. And I'm going to do the same thing. This is negative 10, negative 20. That's good enough. So my x scale is, in, in this particular case, it's 10. You could have gone by fives, I'm sure. Okay. And then for the y-axis, I notice that I go, I have to go all the way up to 258. So I'm going, in my head, I'm thinking 300. I'm going to go all the way to 300, uh, and then it works, right? Uh, so I'm going to go 100, 200, 300, and it's a little bit over, but that's fine. I'm showing you that I'm going up by 100 at a time. And then, so notice that my markings are as consistent as possible. And you're like, Mr. Derson, should I be using a ruler? If you need to, sure, right? If you want to go by centimeters, look at how close that is. That's pretty close. But as long as you're consistent, I just don't want to see like small increment and all of a sudden a large increment, right? Like try to be consistent. And then you do the same thing. I kind of measure. This is, you go in the opposite direction. So this would be negative 200 here. And make sure you label your y-axis, right? X-axis labeled, y-axis labeled, scale is on there. And now you plot your points. So negative 1.75 is right about there. 32.61 is right about there. Y-intercept is 0 0.50, so that would be right about there. Between 0 and 100, right? And then the vertex is 15. 15 is right about there, all the way to 258, which is right about there. And now you just curve out and down, go through it, and arrowheads, okay? Same thing on the other side. You want to try to make it as symmetric as possible like so, and then you just um, make sure you include your equation. Uh, I forgot to answer this. This is pointing down and or narrow or wide. It's y because 7 over 8 is going to be 0 point something, right? How's that for a Thursday morning? Eh? Anyways, uh, so if you feel like you need more practice, these the key is still up there. Everything is still up there. You go for it, right? You, you try it until you feel like, you know what, I've got this. And again, the most important things are the intercepts. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And you know what? I bet you there's other folks in here that feel the same way. So watch what I do. I'm going to clear it, right? So what I do is when there's a fraction at the front, I actually use brackets like that. So I'm going to go use the negative button, not the minus, right? Negative 7 divided by 8, close bracket. So the leading coefficient here, I'm putting that in brackets. So how about we do that? 
I'm going to use a red pen here and kind of say, hey, this is A, right? That is A, the coefficient. It could be a decimal, a fraction, you name it. And then I'm going X squared uh, plus 27X plus 50. And that's, that's why I typed in. Then I hit graph, and that should. with the window, if that happens, try zoom 6 to reset and then try again. Okay. Um, at this point, I will be giving you an AC.